Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. a very special guest tonight. Please welcome, for the first time on the podcast, comedian and actor, Ron Fungus. <laughs> Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for having me, Steve. I love your voice, by the way. Thank you. Um, I thought when I started hearing it more, I'm like, is that, is it, I, I didn't know if it was like your real voice. That's why when I heard you you know you just did scissor bros and i heard you more and more i'm like in my mind i'm like that's his real voice oh did you think i was no, holding on I, to a, a character i i maybe because because we you know we did characters that that podcast you know you guys did your marvel mm -hmm. superheroes and i'm like see what is going on but i'm it's reassuring and comforting knowing that that's your real voice yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like I would be a psychopath if this was <laughs> it, it, a no. fake voice that yeah. I've been holding on for the public eye for the past yeah. 15 years. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, growing up, did you ever get bullied because maybe someone thought, oh, he, he wasn't tough enough or, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course, Steve. <laughs> I sound like this. Yeah, and so where did you grow up in uh, and everything i grew up mostly in the south side of chicago i mean i moved oh. around a bit. i was born in gardena mm -hmm. here in california but mm -hmm. i moved to chicago when i was four and shout then, out to common uh, yeah i'm, I'm also from of, chicago yeah i'm a big fan uh they have great music a lot of good hip-hop comes from that area mm -hmm. right? is kanye from there too I don't yeah know kanye's from there too mm -hmm. so shout out to common he used to uh, be known as common sense yeah he did and um he did a lot of work with the, uh with de la soul mm -hmm. and groups like that as you can see i'm a i'm an avid fan of 90s hip-hop here yeah you as feel you like you like a lot of tribe called quest i love you know rest in peace fife dog uh when he passed it, it really it affected me like deeply you know because mm -hmm. i it, i grew up with that music you know yeah, yeah, of course. I love it too. A yeah, lot of, a lot of my comedy is influenced by um, native tongues in general, and so. No, why, why would you? <laughs> oh man, write that down. I didn't. Oh, you got you kind of threw a curveball at me. Not a lot of people know about that. What? Really? Well, everyone's on Trippy Red, or you really? know, I don't know. Stuff. Okay. I don't know the new stuff. Me neither. Future, Trippy Red. I, I try know. to know some of the new stuff, but I feel like even the newer stuff I know is older. Yeah. Because uh, it's still like a lot of my favorite rappers are still like in their 30s and stuff, so they got to be older. Yeah, mine are probably in their 50s or 60s. Yeah, mm -hmm. mine are like, because I, I'm caught in this, I guess, this capsule where I don't know what's out now, but like I still bump the stuff from ni like 89 to 94, 95. Yeah, I think yeah. that's okay. I think it's yeah, to it's let people, I, as you get older, we're supposed to be kind of sectioned off into groups so mm. that we don't, you, you know, you're not supposed to be hanging out with 20-year-olds and 22-year-olds. You're yeah. supposed to not know the stuff that they know. So, yeah. You know? So have, you, have you heard the, the style of music they listen to, this trap rap stuff? Yeah, I mean, my what, son, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? I mean, I try to find value in, in all music. Mm. I feel like when you get old and, that, and bitter and that stuff, it's like getting old and bitter in comedy. When people are That's like, oh, there's no good comedians anymore. You hear that a a lot right. oh comedians don't are afraid to say stuff and i was like i don't i can say whatever i want all the time right. i don't know what you're talking about. that's so interesting so it's kind of like the way we grew up with the backpack kind of rap stuff mm -hmm. that's their version of it now right Mm -hmm. they're like oh you guys are just not down this is what's yeah going on. because it's like you know it's similar to a lot of pro wrestling where they're like oh if you're not the type of comedians that were doing coke and setting yourself on mm -hmm. fire and uh you know just attacking people in the streets then you're not mm -hmm. a real comedian for yeah. some reason but it's like no things just change you can't do that mm -hmm. but nor do i want to do that you know um 
Yeah, you mentioned pro wrestling because me and mm-hmm. my brother, we, we kind of grew up with the, all that stuff. Uh, and I, I kind of briefly talked about it. There you go. That's all you. I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy one with you. So these are sweet tarts. Um, and this one says rock. And this one says fresh. Nice. So what it say yours? Rock. Fresh rock. Nice. Um, We grew up with all that stuff. Like I remember uh, Hulk, you know, when Hulk did, you know, mm-hmm. did that. And uh, I love Coco Beware mm-hmm. and um, Hillbilly Jim. But what what fascinated you about that that whole spectacle of uh, pro wrestling? Just bright colors, <laughs> like things crashing into each other. People were being loud. Yeah, it was, was it the um, drama too? Because they really, it was kind of like acting, like it was like high level, like mm-hmm. really drama, calling people out, right? Yeah, but it got in there early, so it was really just like how wild it was and colorful, and how um, you know the red and the yellow and the mm. tassels of the Ultimate Warrior and the mm. face paint and all that stuff. Um, now wasn't there an announcer that got involved? Is it something McMahon or? There was an announcer, he and then he started wrestling too. But he was an announcer. But they called him out. What was his name? Um, was it McMahon or Bruce something? You have to give oh, I don't information. know. Now, were you, are you highly um, into like the, the like the British Bulldogs? You know how that these duos and stuff. Mm-hmm. And where did, where uh, wh- where did that all start with you? What do you mean by that, Steve? As far as who were the first, like, who was the first duo that you saw on TV? Like, I like that. Uh, like Abbott and Costello. <laughs> Probably my favorite first duo that mm-hmm. I saw. Lucy and Ricky. Mm-hmm. Um, but then in wrestling... It would probably be the Legion of Doom, Hawk and Animal. Mm. Mm-hmm. And um, as far as Hulk Hogan's legacy, do you think um, he had like a a pretty fruitful career there? I mean, he was around for a long time, right? He was the man. He was the man. Yeah. I think you know that. What, why would? Well, no, no, no. Well, this is I'm again. I'm going back into a time capsule because this is like I'm younger than I look. I'm like. Pretty, I'm getting up there in age. How old are you? I'm in my late 40s. Wow. That is what you said. You had to whisper it. I'm in my late 40s. So, like, you're going to be 50, like, Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, in the, I'm not saying I'm not saying the 5 mm-hmm. No, no. But you So, know, do you dye your hair, or is no, that just no, no, natural? I, no, well. <laughs> like what you're doing right beautiful. now. Like what you're doing. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ron. Um, There's grays. There's two grays that pop out on this side mm-hmm. and maybe one or two or three but when they when i they, when i they're visible I, I i i stand in front of the mirror and i pluck it all the way mm-hmm. out so it doesn't have a chance to grow so you're gonna be like 90 you're gonna probably be like 90 92 right you feel like well, what, so what are you implying that i'm gonna live you, a long time yeah because like, just, like, like, just like how young you look yeah Yes, I mean I didn't want to be racist about no, it, but no, I did. No, think no, 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 no. That's offense exactly taken. who no I thought taken. of. Yeah, though, yeah. Was the, uh, shout out to our main man Pat Morita. Yeah. What people don't know is Pat Morita was actually an actor, but he was a stand-up comedian as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Did you see his documentary? Yes, I. Well, no, I saw mm-hmm. clips of it, but I knew he was a stand-up. Yeah, just like the guy from Law and Order. Yeah. <laughs> um, as far as your stand-up, like, when did you decide to follow that road? Like, do you remember the first mic you did or what mm-hmm. made you want to do it? Um, I mean, I always wanted to do it, but I didn't think it was a real job. Mm. And then I had a son when I was 19, 20. And then I got a job at a bank and then my son got diagnosed with autism. And then I was like, I need a real career. Um, so I was like, I got to try something that I want to do for real mm-hmm. so um, stand up was the only thing I knew I, w- I really loved so I tried it like around Halloween one year in Portland do you remember what year, uh, what year it was uh, it would have been 2006 probably oh okay mm-hmm. so you started a little bit later what do you mean well cause I, I'm just kind of refer- I used my brother as like, a, like cause you know I was around when he started mm-hmm. and he started 
uh, in San Diego around 94, 95, mm -hmm. he at the La Jolla Comedy Store. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, yeah. Bobby was already pretty famous before I started comedy, mm -hmm. for sure. Do you, yeah. like Bro do you like Bob? Yeah, he's great. Mm -hmm. He's a little bit of a bully sometimes, but I think it's because of how he feels well, not he, confident. He was a bully towards you? No, he tried to once, but then I think he felt like... That I can't really be bullied because oh, I'm very com very you, self confident. You're calm. So he did. So then he stopped trying. Yeah. Do yeah. you remember the first time you met him? Like where where it was the context of it? Um, probably comedy store. Yeah, I think it was a comedy store, and he was really drunk, and then he was hugging a lot of people. So he was drunk or something. I don't Cause know. Because he's sober now, or yeah. he was sober for like 17 years. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Now, do you, do you come out of the comedy store like? You said your first mic was up, you say, Portland or something? Mm -hmm. When did you, like, gravitate down here and, like, start doing more mics and getting in within um, the co community? Here, like, 30, um, so, like, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. I just had to write, I was getting divorced from my first wife, and I needed a place to live, and I knew I wanted to, um, you know, either way, I wanted to see if I could really do stand-up, and so it was a nice, like, double whammy of being like oh i don't have i'm getting divorced i don't really have a place to live anyway mm -hmm. so i might as well move to la and see oh, you just did I, it yeah, yeah move down here yeah just me car clothes on my back that's it mm -hmm. and so did you did you hit up the improv like how does that usually work do you just go to one place because everyone has their own story yeah, i or mean trajectory. i was luckily i was already slight i mean i'd already done conan and um a couple of things i haven't done a lot of things at that point but i've been on conan once and mm -hmm. had a couple um tv credits for some small stand-up things so mm -hmm. I, well, you I skipped a couple mind. steps there though because because we went from portland and then you're like to conan so what what about mm -hmm. in between how did you get to the point where you get on, got on Conan and all these shows? Uh, I mean, it was really kind of calculated cause by, based off of the area that I lived in because mm -hmm. I knew it being in and, and the time that the, there was really strong comedy communities in Seattle and San Francisco, which usually there always is in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, and so being in Portland, which is actually it was a weaker comedy community at that time, my whole goal was to like go up to Seattle as quick as possible and do shows. And it allowed me to kind of meet a lot of people who are like still my peers to this day. So like I went to Seattle and I met people like Andy Haynes and Rory Scovel and uh, just a lot of like Hari Kondopolu. And then I went down to San Francisco and I met people like Emily Heller and Chris Garcia and like all these people who I still like work with now. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was a lot about like, doing a lot of festivals in those areas and doing shows in those areas oh, and getting respect and having comedians bring me out there and put me on shows there and let me sleep in their couches and stuff. So yeah. um, there's just that time period where I was like, oh, like I'm getting a lot of respect from people, but I'm not getting any money. But, uh, you know, I knew that money was around the corner. So would you say you need the respect more and then second well, I think you get the respect you first. You get the money second. And then the money. Second, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's just an option. Some people get the money and never get the respect. And that's fine, too, you know. So you don't have to name any comedians. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We don't want to do that. But that exists, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. Where a person is marketable, okay, and they, have, they establish their own fan base, but they don't have the respect, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so do you think they're aware of that or they can give a rat's ass? I think some people are aware of it. Right, yeah, right. Some people are aware of it and they talk about it and they get and they really want it. And I you know, that would suck to feel like that. Um and mm. then I think some people kinda get off on it and they go like well you don't have to i'll just continue to work outside of it and continue to build my outside thing and which i think is great i'm always about building your own fan base and mm. stuff which i think you know like with the podcast and just building bringing people in who wouldn't even normally like that's one of my favorite compliments when people go this is my first stand-up show or i don't even normally do watch stand-up and stuff i love that but at the same time i like to work within like the actual like i love that i get to go to the comedy store mm. I get to go to the improv 
I got to, you know, I'd like to go to the cellar if I was ever in New York for a consistent period of time. Mm -hmm. Um, So I like working within that framework and also building my own fan base. But I understand when people feel like they don't get the respect, so they just do the uh, one, you know. Right. Now, do you think that there's an oversaturation with comedians? Because it seems like every single comedian has to have a podcast, it seems like. Uh, Well, I mean, to me, though, it's uh, like saying, like, Oh, like well, every comedian's got a Twitter. It's just like it's just a necessary just a part, of part of the thing. Oh. Yeah, you know. So that's just how I look at it. If you don't, enjoy, and then also it's just I just don't do things I don't enjoy. So right. if my podcast, um, you know, which I tell my wife sometimes because she'll be she'll get so business minded about the podcast and be like, oh, we need to post this at this time and this and this. Mm-hmm. and I'm just like, oh, it's not like like that to me like it's not a priority to you it's just something priority but it's not my number one it's not a top five it's not even a top five priority but it's not even a top five no you got other things going on yeah you're writing you're doing shows you're doing writing i'm pitching i'm acting i'm dadding yeah you know so as far as the comedy store you got passed all right Mm -hmm. okay wait how did how did that go about how did that it was easy i just was going undateable so then they passed me after i did a couple sets it took like a week who's they though is it was Mitzi around like no what? what was the guy that everybody hated what was his name with the hair tommy. yeah that's him tommy yeah he passed me tommy passed you. yeah tommy passed so, me i love tommy yeah Thanks so shout passing. out to tommy we love tommy. <laughs> shout out to tommy but tommy eventually got fired he did um and i don't want to get into it but it had to do with money and stuff taking money or something right i don't know i don't get into that okay okay well I that's what i heard from the, yeah 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 we could i uh, just like okay this person doesn't work here anymore yeah, but he was there for a long time wasn't he was he? yeah i was just always around it because i'd go see my brother said i would see this person said mm-hmm. um who were some of the comedians you looked up to back then or still do like as far as who inspires you um like Tig nataro Mm -hmm. I love Tig Notaro. I think she's got a wonderful mind Mm -hmm. and just really taught me the power of being quiet and being, um, showing me that you can be, you didn't have to be bombastic and be wild like that. On stage? mm -hmm. Now, when you do your set, do you do this calm demeanor? It's a mix of things, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's all parts of me. I try to be sometimes get in your face about things. Yeah, but it's usually just calming. Mm-hmm. But I, I found that you can't do that for like an hour. Would you want to sit and listen to just this for an hour of stand up? Well, with you, your voice calls. Your answer was, you, oh, yes. Yeah, okay. Does, does, does his voice, it, it's like ASMR, right? It, your voice is so calming. It's just like, oh, okay, Thank I'm okay. You. I'm okay now. I like that. That sweet tart. Yeah, 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 your speech. yeah. <laughs> it's a sweet tart, but it calms me down. Oh, nice. Yeah. So usually, what happens is you need to be greenlit. You have to audition for the talent coordinator or something. Mm-hmm. And then, what are the advantages of being a regular at the comedy store? Oh, my favorite is just that you have a place to park on Sunset Boulevard. That's, that's and it. you get you get to do sets every night. I mean, you, you know, now I kind of do. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, before, and also before I didn't really take it as serious. Sometimes I would like, um, no call, no show, some sets, and mm-hmm. um, and so then they would put me on ice for a few weeks. You right, know, right, right. Um, but then I learned to be more respectful about that. So as far as the the talent pool at the comedy store, how many comics are passed? that are regulars and how many people go up every night i always wondered that i mean you see probably like a group of five ten people that you see every other week or that's we'll see all the time that i'm there whether it's like someone like rick ingram or sarah tiana mm-hmm. um, shout out to rick yeah he's been here he when he was here i was actually confused because he kind of put me on the spot and he was we we're doing these weird games and he was yeah he was just but he's on the spectrum too, as well, right? Is he? You see, I can see that. Yeah, I can see and that. And then you you mentioned your son, uh, being on the spectrum, um, as far as autism. Um, we just had a psychologist do an assessment with me and Jeremiah, and she said that I may have a uh, OCD because mm-hmm. if you noticed, uh, when I was at the fridge every week, I have to hit it three times, mm-hmm. and then if you notice on the piano, I I I had to wipe it out three times. Yeah. Mm. So I think that, I don't know, I might have to go see a psychiatrist or something. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. 
Did but they say it, anything it, about Jeremiah having anything? Um. Yeah. With <laughs> <laughs> I have to be very careful because that's my partner here. Um. With him, I think he has a whole different thing. His thing is he's the hardest working person I know mm -hmm. that I've ever met. Mm -hmm. And I um we I noticed that with him he's always working. He's always you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I know I and I brought this up, I said I think that maybe that's kind of a coping mechanism because he uh you know sometimes people don't want to be like in stillness or mm -hmm. you know what I mean, just mm -hmm. in their own thoughts. So I think that he's he he takes it to the extreme. Yeah. Have you noticed anything like that going yeah. on with him or um, I mean, I, I don't say that I spend enough time with him where I would mm -hmm. see that uh, like that. Not like you. you I've spent a lot of yeah, time. Yeah. Like or, hotel rooms. And yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I could see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You telling me that doesn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. Now, what 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 do you what do you think the most fulfilling part is as far as what you do? Like, what's your like end goal? Like, wh where's like the yeah, the end of the rainbow, like as far as what a comedian or actor or whatever is trying to accomplish just being out here in Los Angeles? Uh, I mean, my whole end goal would just to be to have like a lasting legacy in comedy mm. and also in positivity and being a, um, a good person and a um, mm. free person. Mm -hmm. and, what, and the fact that I like to really do the things that I truly enjoy and that I'm passionate about and hopefully they make me money and I love it when they do and I mm -hmm. love them to be extremely profitable but I don't like to do things just for money so I would like to hopefully just be able to like die in this industry of like continuing to work continue to to um mm -hmm. and not die on some like hotel in the middle of right. some shitty like river Fe river phoenix or something yeah, yeah. or like greg Giraldo, who oh, i love you right. know and, and just that that brody too yeah i mean yeah. i was going to open for greg a couple of weeks after like that was going to be like my fo first hosting in portland it was supposed to be for greg Giraldo. And then he passed away, and I just remember being like, "Oh, I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want to die in some hotel away from my family and stuff." That's, it seems like there's a common thread there with comedians, particularly uh, even uh, Chris Farley as well. I just saw a documentary on YouTube about mm -hmm. his life. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I didn't realize that he did drug. You know, mm -hmm. he, he liked to party. Uh, another one that pops up is sam kennison too right mm -hmm. they they all have that other side too yeah yeah that's interesting yeah yeah so i'm just trying to be healthier mm -hmm. and have a hopefully like to me like i never have to be like the most popular person but if i could just have a long career and secretly be like oh did you know ron was super successful and people be like oh, i didn't even know oh great. so you want to kind of be under the radar mm -hmm. you kind of want to be kind of Right there in the middle. Yeah, just doing yeah. my thing, doing stand up when I want, and just also being having free time. To t I love traveling. Like, oh, I yeah. love being able to go overseas, and even more is like I love if I can afford to take like my, my family or people who can't afford to go without me. You know, and I I love having that experience. So that takes a lot more money. So I mm -hmm. want to be able to do it's like I love to sell shows and like kind of be in the background of that type of thing well. yeah yeah now where are some uh places you've gone that like that you really enjoyed and you want to return like like as far as globally as well like uh i mean always we've come back it's just that me and my wife both love japan so much we really about retiring in japan if we could so tokyo huh uh kyoto would be prefer really? probably yeah uh, i've never been there i've always wanted to go to japan i've been to korea like what are some mm -hmm. awesome things about japan they got some weird machines there right yeah weird machines <laughs> i love the machines yeah i love that it has an embracing of like most nerddoms and you see a lot mm. of um like you wouldn't expect to be like, oh, they they have pristine NESs or Famicoms. Yeah, and no, I want to get to the video games as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. just all those types of things, and then just like a strong hip hop scene, and just a lot of Wait, real in Japan. Yeah, 
And, so and there's Japan, Japanese hip hoppers. Japanese hip hop, Japanese um like really cool Japanese sneaker stores where they're stuck in the nineties. Right, and so right. they're the, all the about Air Maxes, you get the Air Maxes there. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they're just all about Michael Jordan and stuff. So it's super the food, so it's pretty and the food's amazing. It's I mean, wonderful. Dude, like the ramen, yeah. All that, the sushi right? and the ramen and the green matcha oh and all my God. just delicious snacks. And then you can go to a bunch of temples and stuff yeah so good time and they don't have guns could you live out there do you think towards the, the end a of your guy life? had to build a gun to shoot somebody yeah yeah so there there's a lot of tradition and history there with japan you know they had you know yaku, yakuza there mm-hmm. and then they i mean the beautiful tattoos mm-hmm. um even martial arts and stuff yeah, aikido's from there <laughs> <laughs> aikido you know what i mean mm-hmm. like yeah um how much is a ticket if I wanted to go to? How much is a ticket to Tokyo or K- Kyoto? Like, I don't know. I mean, it depends on how you want to get mm. there. Do you need you the, What about the language? Like, do you don't not to Tokyo, but other places mm. seem like more. To, Tokyo is very English friendly. It is very much so. Yeah. Yeah. So, are there like just people non Japanese that just like live out there? Obviously, there of has course, to be like yeah. dudes from. Like Sweden might just live there. Yeah, people like meet from, a woman. Yeah, I mean, his there's Japanese. a lot of people. Probably, you know, we all know those people from high school that were taking Japanese lessons mm. and they loved it so much yeah. that they wanted to watch animes and stuff. Oh hell and yeah! And then they moved to Japan. That that's happened. another thing. Anime, like the man- man- manga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's big there, right? Yeah. yeah. Are you into comics as well? I used to be, not as much yeah. as an adult, mm-hmm. um, just because I th- I thought it was a real investment into my um, yeah, it's very retirement. And yeah. but then I found out that the value really wasn't what I thought it was. You mean and the value of the comic? Yeah, those manga I comics. I would keep tracking the wizards and the <laughs> things, and then when I try to go sell them, they'd be like, "No, here's yeah. less than half of that," and it wow. broke my heart. Yeah, you know? and so I was like, I'm not. How many? I gotta get out of this game. How mm-hmm. how big was your collection of manga? Mm, I mean, not that big. I probably just had like two or three long boxes. I had some good, couple Spider Mans that had some uh, mm-hmm. first appearances of a few people, villains or whatever. But like nothing. I think the most expensive book I sold was like two hundred bucks. Okay. So. Yeah. And then I wanted to get to video games because we we mentioned video games and mm-hmm. uh, you know I was playing. Yeah, uh, your series. Yeah, I, I got my. Yeah. How do you? Oh, you know about that machine. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ron. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, you're familiar yeah, with yeah, this yeah, yeah. component. That was an investment, yeah. yeah. So shout out to Banana Steve. Uh, he works for Microsoft. Okay. And he got me the deal. Oh, nice. Um, so what are, I've always w- wondered this about people in the games. What are some of your all-time favorites? Um, Think Super about it. Super Mario 3 is okay. probably my favorite game. Super Mario World. There's a lot of Super Marios in there. So you're into the Mario thing. I like the Mario. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... No RPGs? I'm just throwing it out there. Not mm, no RPGs? The Grand of Theft all o- time. Grand Theft Auto. Theft autos. Um, I mean, my favorite RPG is probably Paper Mario and a Thousand Year Door mm-hmm. on the GameCube. It's Dang, more you're bringing it back to the GameCube. Yeah, okay. That's probably my favorite yeah. RPG. Did you have the old Nintendo? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. So do you remember? Okay, so since I, uh, we brought Nintendo up, uh, d- so d- Excite Bike, mm-hmm. Kid Icarus, yes, Metroid, yes, um, Kung Fu. That was a game. Um, Teenage Contra, Mutant Ninja Turtles. Bart versus the Space Mutants. Yeah. <laughs> so you remember all that. Yeah. Now, if I... I have got good memory. Do you still collect console? Do you have a collection yeah. of... You have gaming consoles. I got a bunch of gaming consoles. Oh, so what, can you name a few? It's interesting. I have... I have... Uh, well, I mean, I have the Series X and mm-hmm. I have a PlayStation 5. Mm-hmm. And then I have like a couple maybe two or three playstation fours mm-hmm. uh, uh like a death stranding limited edition one that i got from doing a promotion with them mm-hmm. and then i got the like um limited edition like anniversary one that's like all blue and see-through and it's real cool that's probably one of my favorites you own these right now yeah they're in my closet we need to organize yeah. them but they're in my closet um in my son's room he has a playstation 2 he has a 360, and yeah, he has game. a mm-hmm. Series X. Oh, he's got one of these? Mm-hmm. Okay. What's a, what, what, what kind of games is he playing? Right now he's playing Saints Row. Oh, what's that game? I've seen, I've been seeing posters it's about like that. It's like Grand Theft Auto, but really? sillier. It's not a good game, but he's... He f- <laughs> the one 
he wanted it so bad that he's like, it's good. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I know it's not good. I know it's not. I can tell by the graphics. And no. It's not good. God, GTA, man, you're bringing back memories, man. Because mm-hmm. I used to just play that game, and I'd play it different. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would just snipe people. I'd go find the highest place. Mm-hmm. And then I remember uh, sniping people in their uh, through the window, and their heads would hit the dash. They go, huh, and then... And yeah, then, you play in a way that would have made me concerned about you. <laughs> <laughs> Where I'm like, Time you need that part. someone to talk there to. Was some, yeah, there was some anger issues there. Yeah, yeah sure. that's when I lived in the smaller when people, apartment. I've seen it before when you have that friend who plays Grand Theft Auto yeah, and they don't that? even try to start a mission. They, no, just, they just go on a rampage. Yeah, <laughs> so which that, is fine. People go on rampages, but then I mean, some people get real... They, because the, there's a star kind of a meter, right? Mm-hmm. If you if you get past four or five stars, then the 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 army or the yeah, you know what I'm saying, the yeah. SWAT team, Tanks and trucks, yeah. yeah. So would you say this? Because you know this exists in society, like uh, school shooter shooters or mm-hmm. whatnot. Do you think that if they had that outlet, like a war zone or a Grand Theft Auto, mm-hmm. they would have done that act? Probably, yeah. I mean, I think they did have it. They still have it. And they so you're it. saying that didn't satisfy them? They had to go above and beyond and do that other, the real act of doing that? Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of people would, I don't know. I mean, a lot of mental issues and a lot of um, access to guns. Yeah. So I think if you put the two of them together, you're bound to have, bound to have trouble. I don't think video games has really anything to do with it. No, no, no. I'm saying that maybe a video game like a first-person shooter could mm-hmm. prevent you from doing the real act because you're doing it. You're kind of expressing it through the video game. Mm, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a. I mean, I'm willing to try. Because <laughs> I play Warzone every night. Mm-hmm. When you guys leave, I'm gonna load in Mm -hmm. and i think it desensitizes me like because i i'm so used to you know i set my proximity mines Mm -hmm. and then i go you know and i do my thing i camp and i shoot shoot people and Mm -hmm. in the game but it's do you think that's uh, do you think that's like a problem like a problematic thing games like that uh no, uh, no, I think it's fine for you. I mm-hmm. mean, I feel like as long as you go outside and walk around, <laughs> I feel like your room's a little small for you to yeah. just do that and have that be everything. What this? Yeah, then I'd be No, worried. no, I don't only do this. Okay. I have a girlfriend. I have yeah, you know, I'm, do, I'm doing so with Jeremiah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't just Yeah, but I would just it, say keep it in balance. Yeah. yeah. But this is the thing is another thing why I like gaming is there's a community. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. I get it's a so there's a social aspect mm-hmm. and I get to bro down with you you know what I mean catch yeah, up with people no, I agree. yeah That's why I like to do my Twitch that yeah. I do oh mm. let's let's plug your Twitch are you still doing that yeah can we can we plug it real quick sure if okay you want go to. ahead Ron. hi okay <laughs> come to my Twitch yeah Twitch TV Ron underscore Funches join the Funch Bunch <laughs> we play games of all type. And we talk about snacks. We're real upset about the Choco Taco going away. Oh, is it going away? It did go away. I grew up with that stuff. Yeah, man. we love the Choco it. Taco, man. Mm-hmm. The waffle cone. Yeah, yeah oh, man. that's also one of my dreams is to have an artisanal ice cream truck that sells <laughs> homemade, healthier versions of oh. those classic treats like the strawberry yeah. shortcake bar. I remember that. Choco there's Taco. like there's that crunchy stuff on the outside of yeah. it. Yeah, I love I that. I want to figure out that crunchy stuff. Yeah, what is that? I don't know. It's kind of in between a like a waffle cone but breaded kind is of. Yeah. yeah, what it is that? It could be cookie. It could, it could be, be cake. Anything. I don't know. Yeah. I want to figure it out. And I want to make it I've better. I've had s- hundreds of those. Yeah. Those were, do they still sell those? I'm quite sure they do. Right down, strawberry shortcake. Um, Yeah, that ice cream snack. Yeah. yeah. Now, I had a couple questions about Twitch. I know I've been procrastinating. Why? When did you get started with that? I got started with it over the pandemic, basically. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of friends telling me to, to get involved with it beforehand, mm-hmm. but I just didn't want to have to entertain people while I play games mm. because I like playing games to relax. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I found out that I liked, the com- especially in the pandemic, I liked the community aspect. It helped me reconnect with some friends that I hadn't talked to mm-hmm. in a long time and meet a bunch of new friends, and it's really cool now that... Um, 
like some of the people travel from like I'm getting ready to do this weed show in in town. Um, you smoke? Mm-hmm. Oh, I just. <laughs> I'm sorry. How long have you been what smoking? What about me? Made you feel like like <laughs> this guy doesn't <laughs> smoke weed? I thought you're just. So <laughs> let me ask you this: When you're not smoking weed, are you? I this was calm? so hot. Did you see the comments of the Scissor Bros? <laughs> no, I don't read. I don't really read the comments. So how, you were high? I was very high that time. <laughs> I couldn't tell. I was so high. I was like, okay, I was okay, since beyond you, the normal well, amount of high. Really? Yeah. So hold up. Thanks for confessing that. Well, so you're high when you were with Jeremiah and me. The mm-hmm. other, really? I, I had to be. <laughs> That's right. You have to. <laughs> right? Yeah. To endure that. To go. I mean, to get in the right mind state. Yeah. I wouldn't call it enduring, but to you meet you all at your level. At that level. I so, to get so what are you saying? High. You're implying that the Scissor Bros podcast already has an iry feel about mm-hmm. it. Really? Yeah. We don't. We don't do any of that. I know. I used to love blunts. Mm. Yeah, I used to. Never I, been a blunt guy. No, well, I, I was when I was a teen, but then I always associated them with feeling gross, feeling dirty. Mm-hmm. So I'm always prefer bongs or uh, so, vaping and stuff like that. No, are there um, there's certain um like vape uh pens with mm-hmm. marijuana. Is it a da- dabbing dab? Vape things. Oh well, yeah, I mean there's vape pens and yeah, yeah, okay, vape rigs. Pens. Yeah, and, yeah. D- how high um would I get? Because I I haven't smoked in about 15 years. Mm-hmm. If I hit that, what would it do to me? You get too high and you probably have a panic attack. I probably don't <laughs> recommend it. From what really? you're telling me about it's your OCD and mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. I would probably say if anything, you want a light edible or five milligrams or so of, of an indica. Oh, uh, whoa, so there's, you, you know the difference between strands and stuff? Yeah. Well, I can tell you that, and then I could tell you that because of all the things going on mm-hmm. with mixing and matching, that everything is basically a hybrid now. Wow. That the indica and the sativa things are more oh. of a marketing thing, and it's all about turpentines and terps and shit like that now. What are cookies? What's cookies? Cookies is a brand uh-huh. ran by a rapper named Burner mm-hmm. who is uh, on the cover of Forbes. Really? So, so cool. So does the strand does the weed taste like cookies? Um, no. It depends on the brand that they do, but they mm-hmm. have different flavors that taste pretty good. They mm-hmm. used to have my favorite weed, which was a Gelato Forty One, was my favorite. God, that that sounds they so made. good to me. I know, right? I know. It's a fun name. You know what I'm realizing? I got sober uh, during the wrong um, era. Why? Because of the pandemic? Well, mm-hmm. no, no. Because I like four, fi- 14, 15 years clean. I, I. These dispensaries around mm-hmm. here never. Ex- oh no, you're. We're almost there, Ron. We're getting there. I got a um, baby. They never existed when I was around. Mm-hmm. So I get sober and nowadays. Uh, you could just go anywhere and just. Do you have to have a license Mm-mm. to? So how do? If I wanted to, or anyone could just go in there and get mm-hmm. any. Really? Yeah, you're almost fifty. <laughs> I think they'll let That's you have great it. <laughs> That's great timing. So I'm I'm guessing, dude, dude, let's just play this out hypothetically. Let's say I got diagnosed with something terminal, right? Okay. And I'm like, they, I have three years to live. I'm on board. I could smoke a little, right? No. Yeah. Why not? Right. I mean, because yeah. if I know it's the end, right? I mean, yeah. I'm sure my the pe- my my recovery people won't like you know. No, won't like not I at that, that point. But you know what I'm saying? Like, so do you think could it help me? Could it help me like just lower my stress? Well, yeah, for sure. Are you high right now a little bit? A little bit. Okay. Well, really? Not a lot. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, but you, I can't tell. Are you, You're normally just chill like this, right? Yeah. yeah. It makes it very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. No, can you do comedy high? Um. Yeah. Some, you know, not super high. Yeah. It depends on how comfortable I am and what I'm doing. I wouldn't record a special high and I wouldn't, yeah. I don't. <laughs> Act high, yeah. But I, uh, but, but you could, it. right? <laughs> do you do you remember? Was there any set that you've done where you're too high and you realize that on stage and you're yeah, like, yeah, of course. And then what do you? How do you deal with the crowd when that happens? Something like that. You just tell them about it. I mean, I and you're want honest my, about it. Yeah. One of my favorite experiences is that mm-hmm. I had some edibles when I went to Japan. I took them with me, and I was on vacation. You could I, take them on the airplane? No, you're not supposed to. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. 
thanks for your honesty. Keep going. Um, and so I went to this open mic in Osaka, Japan. I thought I was just going to hang out, watch some comedians, and like maybe go up and do a few minutes. And mm-hmm. uh, but when uh, you know how like small comedy club owners are, they find out that somebody who's on TV is in their thing, and all of a sudden it's the Ron Funches show featuring. Oh, the, the pressure. Yeah. That and, elevates you to that Yeah, headliner. and I didn't know that. Yeah. You, wait, what do you mean you didn't know that? I, did, I thought I was just coming by. No, well, they, you're on the billboard. When I get there. <laughs> so, you had, so your manager booked you? For no. Some, oh, dude, so you had just ended up being there? They, I was just in a, on vacation. Wait, hold up. You were on vacation, and one night, you know, I'll do a mic. No, I said, said we might go buy a mic, and then one of the, because one of the, our tour guys said that he knew a place where they did English comedy. English comedy. And so then we said, oh, we might go by, and I think he saw my, found out my name, and told the person, the prom- promoter. And then the promoter looked up my name and was oh, like, no. oh, this guy's on TV. And oh stuff. no. And so then it became like, okay, we're going to put like five people in front of you, and then you go up at the end. And I had done like. 60 milligrams of edibles oh. and I hadn't done stand up in about two and a half weeks and I'm on vacation. Yeah, you're on vacation. Yeah. So, so I when did you, what did that do to you once you knew the situation? Um, It freaked me out. I could yeah. riff for like five minutes and then as soon as I tried to remember a joke, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't remember a single joke, not a single one of my jokes. So it your was, mind went blank. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> how many people were out in the crowd? Like 20. 15. 15. Not that many. Yeah, but still, it's the situation. Yeah, and they were also comedians, so they were judging me, you know. Oh. And then one of them were like, a um, couple of them were like drag queens on their night off getting ready because they had a show there the next day. Oh and they were the, the meanest about it. What, what, were they heckling you? Nah, but at one point they said, uh, you can be done now. <laughs> you can be done now. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? Because that's a lot of different energies getting thrown at you. You're on stage. Mm-hmm. You're on something milli- sixty milligrams of mm-hmm. edibles. And my wife's pissed. Why is your my, Why is your wife pissed? Because I'm not doing well. And I'm causing attention to come upon her, you're and I'm asking though. her, yeah, you uh, to help me remember jokes. <laughs> you also, <laughs> from the side of the stage, what's your wife's name? Christina. Uh, Christina, do you rem- you're asking her if she remembered the punchline or or setup or the setups? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, that sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. How did you get through that? How long was your set? Like ten minutes. Ten minutes, and you just endured. Yeah, I just endured and messed around, but then I loved it because I was like, That's I'm a great a, attitude, um, man. A, a, like successful comedian and i just bombed my ass off in the open mic in osaka japan i it's never thought i would be yeah. in osaka japan uh-huh. doing stand up and let alone bombing and then i just went and got i a uh, fun japanese ice cream at the 7-eleven next door <laughs> and tried to convince my wife not to be mad at me because i was yeah. like you do get that this is a great story like, yeah is, that's a great story. i bombed it's much better it's so much more like i and i go i and I was, ex- I just go, oh, when I go to the comedy store and stuff, I don't get the bomb. I don't want a bomb. I could bomb here. And it right. Was fine. It you did it in Osaka. Yeah. Yeah. Now, since you brought that up, like, because I'm sure there might be a person wanting to do comedy, start to start it up. Uh, that's a part of the whole thing, right? Is yeah, bombing. Of course. Mm. How did you first deal with that? Do you remember your first bomb? I don't remember my first one, no, but I remember. A, a lot of bombing early, especially when you're figuring out who you are, and especially mm-hmm. for me because I'm kind of different in in a lot of regards. So, um, when you don't have any type of like notoriety or name, people are automatically gonna be like, "This is weird, and I don't like it," you know. Mm. So I had to get through a lot of of, of people's expectations at first, mm-hmm. um, but I think bombing is actually I mean. It's it really even informs the way probably the way I'm gonna like parent my son and stuff. It's just really a, in what in what what, just what push ways people to try and show you that show, so that you you when you fail you can see that it doesn't kill you. Like right. for me, a, a lot of That's my fear for even wanting to start stand up was that I was afraid that I wouldn't be good. So then I didn't 
I was afraid that I was wrong about what I thought what my calling was. Right. Right. That's interesting, man. Um, so how did, how did you deal with it? Do you just, when you realize you're not doing well, mm -hmm. do you panic inside or do you just kind of plow through it? Um, I used to plow through it, but then I, Mark Maron, watching Mark Maron a few times and him, the way he was present about addressing the audience. If, um, things weren't the way he thought they should go or mm. what he expected to. And, that, and so I've learned more to have f fun and enjoy myself and like mm -hmm. never really, I try never to go on autopilot. I try to like, if you're not liking me, like I'll, I'll bring it up. It's fine. It doesn't, especially yeah. now. Cause I'm like, Oh, I like my life. I like my, myself. I like my comedy. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like it, that's, you're, that's fine. Yeah. You're, you're probably yeah. wrong, but that's fine. You have a great attitude, man. Thank That's you. That's a great attitude, man. Because I'm sure there's a lot of comedians, uh, they take it personally. Mm -hmm. um, they get offended. Um, and it's it's not an easy thing to kind of go through. I mean, no, not I everyone's was, like you, it, you know, you, a lot I of mean, people. I get like that, too, though, because I'm like, oh, I don't get enough fans come out. Why am I doing a lot of clubs? I want to do theaters and all that stuff. And then mm -hmm. sometimes... Um, it's just perspective. And other times I get this mindset and I'm like, you're a fucking almost 40 year old guy who mostly does jokes about like rug rats and how, how you have a pretty adjusted life is nothing fucking mm -hmm. like, you know, wh and you still get a good fan base out of this It's wild that anybody comes to see me for the, how like particularly niche and how. I just talk about whatever the fuck I want, you know? Yeah, so, amazing. like, the fact that I get, like, 50-year-old, 60... Not to be rude to you. Oh, no. uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> 60 year old okay, people yeah. who, who come out and listen to me do like a 10 minute chunk about rugrats mm -hmm. is like i think that's, that's fantastic yeah. man yeah um now what advice would you give a you know comic starting out right now who they might watch this interview mm -hmm. like what kind of like advice could you give them i don't really i don't think i can like, you know i mean because you were saying some enlightening stuff just now as far as just like your perspective yeah your attitude but towards i don't have it. practical advice my I'm always the same advice is just do what makes you happy because mm -hmm. it's a long haul either way so if you spend 15 years doing shit that you think is shitty just so that you can make it you're going to have a negative attitude right if anything positive happens so you might as well enjoy the journey All aspects mm -hmm. of it. yeah and, yeah and and live a lifestyle that makes it so you can can enjoy it you know mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't overextend yourself and don't put yourself where you need too much money so that you don't so you have to do things you don't want to do you know yeah um, yeah and that's that's a bonus like because i know we've all worked job jobs you know yeah it's like that's why i'm really grateful that i get to have a YouTube channel and just post videos and I don't have to wash dishes anymore. Yeah. At least for now. Yeah. Now, do but you that's work? good yeah. to have the wolves down your back. It keeps you motivated. Well, because I know what what I have to go back to. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked at Fat Sal's for a minute. Oh, really? Oh. When was this? Uh, mm, uh, uh, after 2000. 11, 12, 13, mm -hmm. 2000, somewhere. Uh, you know, Zane, uh, the, uh, Zane, shout out to Zane, hired me. You know who who, who kind of trained me? I work with is Punky. Mm -hmm. she, and then I realized later she got SNL. Mm -hmm. She actually trained me uh, to, you know, bag the stuff up and work the register. But that blew my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's on SNL now. Yeah, Punky's great. Yeah. 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 So um, that's why um, really. I'm really grateful that now I get to just, you know, kind of do my own thing. You know, um, are there, do you have specials out right now? I do. Thank you for asking. Yeah. <laughs> Can we like promote some of sure, that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Cause I like, I like my guests to kind of, um, it's actually a great time and comedy central put out both my specials, my half hour and my hour called giggle fit are now available on YouTube. So it's an easy mm -hmm. find. Just put my name, Ron Funches, or just put giggle fit. Uh, and can you, you spell can out the last spell the last name? G my name? Yeah. Sure, F U N C H E S. And how do you pronounce? Did I pronounce it? You correctly? did funches. Funches. Yeah, not yeah. like before when you said funges on the I just, thing. I said funges on the on the scissor brush. You, you know what's cool about you is uh, when I used to wrestle in Poway, uh, a guy that wrestled at like 175 pounds, he was a bald white guy, uh, Irish looking. His name was Ross Funges. 
Why is Ross that cool Funkus. about me? No, it's cool because it's like I can correlate it to my childhood. Like, oh, oh Ross, Ron. Oh. But I remember um, during, uh, sorry for the story. Well, I'll keep it short. Uh, during San Diego sections of the finals, right? We we're uh, getting ready for the finals. We had both made, uh, respectively, in our own weight class, are the finals. Mm-hmm. So it's like the, the grand night, whatever. The mm-hmm. And I remember the guy he had to wrestle was, do you remember Saved by the Bell? Yeah. Do you remember that a Latino guy, Mario? Mario Lopez. Yes. Yeah. So Mario Lopez had to wrestle Ross. Mm. And I remember hearing this because we're outside kind of, walking by them and then we heard their conversation he's like who are you wrestling in the finals and this is uh mario talking and he you know what he said he goes uh some guy named ross fungus and i just remember like <laughs> i remember how how interesting that was to me i'm like that's that's not his name you know mm-hmm. who but, won uh, ross hell yeah Ross. but uh, yeah, yeah but can i tell you the the breakdown okay so there's a cif right then there's masters, so CIF County San Diego section. Top six in each weight class goes to masters. Top four in each weight class weight class goes to state the state tournament. Mm-hmm. Ross Mario took eighth, mm. and Ross even beat him. Ross took fifth. I choked. Uh, <laughs> I always choked. I always choked. I always I always choked at state always. Mm. I'm trying to Too think much of an pressure. analogy. Yeah, and this is going back to, I mean, this is something that you could, it's a parallel you could use. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're almost there, buddy. Um, with comedy in the sense that it's kind of like you, 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 you do all these great shows, but then just because, and then someone says, do you want to do this, the Wiltern or like a bigger amphitheater? And then you know your stuff, you know you're good, but then... You get psyched out because oh no, I mm-hmm. never that stage is mm-hmm. too big, mm-hmm. and so every guy that I wrestled, I had beaten throughout the year, and I just remember it's kind of like this. It's like imagine you're you're on a huge stage, and you go up and grab your mic to do your set, and nothing comes out. Mm. You're literally frozen, just staring. So that's how I was at state. Like, the you know the ref would mm-hmm. blow the whistle, and I would freeze. Next thing you know, this guy's you know I'm getting slammed, and I'm just frozen. Yeah. Mm. Only only at the state tournament. Only there. Mm. The rest of the year, I was fine. I was placing every tournament first. All that. It's always at the state tournament. Sorry about the Ross and Ron Funch. I just thought it's it, fine. It, it just it just I made just the connection. I feel bad for you because yeah. it feels like why, it re- why do you feel bad? Because it feels like it really affected you that you you choked at the big time. How many times have I brought brought this story? I'm gonna ask my intern. How many times have I brought this story up? Recently? No, no, no. Overall, since you've been here, a couple times. Couple times. Your new intern. Oh, she's. She's awesome. Okay. Yeah, she's yeah. awesome. Yeah, she's made a year. Uh, how yeah, do yeah. you make this? How is this a corporate? What? Do you, what, what is she learning? Oh man, let's. You want to go through the trajectory real quick? She learned how to use all the equipment, you uh-huh. know, through trial and error. Now she's learning through how trial to trial. <laughs> no, 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 no. One error. <laughs> Maybe one error. She's been perfect. Okay. Right? All right, you've been practically perfect. Okay. Only one episode. Okay. All right. Out of how many? What program do you find an intern? Uh, that's a good question. That's a we, great question. Uh, on my Instagram, I want because I had another intern, uh-huh. and I'm like, oh, if he gets sick, maybe I'd want a backup. Uh huh. And so, and then, uh, he slowly phased out, and then she's my intern now. Okay. And so we interviewed her, me and uh, you know, Craig. Yeah. Yeah, me and Craig. He helped. We both showed up. And okay. Then we interviewed her, and she she fit the bill. Okay. And now she's learned. She knows how to use all the equipment. She knows how to uh, do the time stamp. Yeah. Okay. She's doing great. Yeah. So you're trying to get your own podcast going? She or will produ- one day. Produ- one day producing. she will. One day she will. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So time had flown by. It really? Yeah. Yeah. Um. At this moment, I wanted to uh, 
get you to promote all your stuff. Okay. Your Instagram, sure. website, special, all that stuff. Sure. Oh, take your time, too. Take your time. Well, the Instagram mm-hmm. is at Ron Funch, which is my full name, but without the ES. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. just R-O-N-F-U-N-C-H. Mm-hmm. And then Twitter is at Ron Funch's. Um, the Twitch again is Ron underscore Funches. Mm-hmm. It used to be just regular Ron Funches, but then I forgot the password and just <laughs> freaked out about it. So I just created a whole new account. Uh, so that was my mistake. Mm-hmm. Uh, but please just come over there. It's not too difficult mm-hmm. to find. Um, I'm on an Apple TV Plus show called Loot with Maya Rudolph that got renewed for second season. So please check out the first season now. Congratulations on that. Uh, I'm on a show called Harley Quinn mm-hmm. on HBO Max mm-hmm. uh, where I play King Shark. People can check that out. I do mm-hmm. stand up. Um, uh, my tour's just ending, so just, I guess, see me in LA mm-hmm. if you want, or just go around punches.com and mm-hmm. I might be coming to your town sometime soon. Uh, anything else? I think that's it. I think uh, that seems about it. Oh, so my podcast. I have two podcasts. Come on, man. Don't forget. Let's plug yeah. that. Yeah. Getting Better is my main podcast. We talk about getting better at life and stuff with a bunch of fun people. It's just a fun time about positivity and optimism. Mm-hmm. And then I have a pro wrestling podcast I do with Spotify Live. Mm-hmm. Live every Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Mm-hmm. I call it the cross-section of sports and entertainment. Nice. I bring on wrestlers. I bring on people who love wrestling and entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just talk about the week in wrestling. That's man. awesome, man. Um so do you upload weekly on your YouTube channel as well? On yeah, yeah, for the yeah for the mm-hmm. podcast and mm-hmm. yeah for clips and stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and, uh, can you say the YouTube channel again? So it's they just can Ron Funches. Come Ron subscribe. Funches. Yeah. It could use a boost, please. Mm-hmm. Dude, that dude. Thanks for coming through, man. Thanks for having me. That was fun, me. man. Um, thanks again for uh, tuning in for another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. If you want to help support the platform, go to patreoncom slash Weeby. I also do another podcast with our friend Jeremiah Watkins called Scissor Bros. Mm-hmm. Those episodes drop every Friday, 6 in the morning. Go to youtube.com slash Scissor Bros. Okay? Subscribe to that channel as well. Um, we do also have a P.O. box. Um, I do. So if you want to send packages, mail, anything, send all your stuff over to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. Anybody ever send you anything real fun? Oh, dude, I've gotten up. Dude, That see that Transformers lunchbox? Yeah, that is fun. Someone sent that. That's okay. And guess what? Wow. Later on, someone sent a GOAT. Remember GoBots? Yes. Someone sent me a GoBots lunchbox. I've gotten so many crazy things. What else? skateboards, a lot of art, mm-hmm. um, just uh, uh, fan art, stuff like that. Yeah. You got a P.O. box? No. Dude, you should get one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You'll like it. So send your packages and mail t- today over to that P.O. box. I haven't che- I went, haven't been over there in a while, but I'll go uh, very soon. Uh, all the all my music stuff, StevieWeebyBandCamp.com. I have a few albums on Spotify now under uh, the moniker Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. What time did we start this How podcast? How do you pronounce that? Kwangu. Mm. Yeah. Every time I see it, I always pronounce it Kwangu. <laughs> so I really was off about that. No, that's fine. That's fine. Did we start at early, earlier than nine, huh? So we made an hour. Dude, it was an honor having you, brother. It's a pleasure to be here. Hell yeah, that was fun. You're enjoyable. Oh, it's still going. <laughs> 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 My buddy Skip is a trip, feeling blue like a crib. Straight for robbing a bank, letting loose from the hip. He really couldn't predict this grip was so full of amps. Tim and Henry were woodpeckers, did a song and dance at bit. Oh, rodeo man in the West, you can. You're the best on the land, too. Bless the sands, do the bull with your hand. No, Skip, you can. Get that fucking bull, pull on that rope. Feeling stir crazy, maintaining against the grain. Making me want to get in a plane. The pain inside my brain never ends, sustain. I'm down for the count on the ground. 
today, don't give it away, they're preaching the praise, the rays. Shining it down to body as crowns, the finest of frowns delayed. Skippy's afraid, he feels betrayed, lift this way, can deal with shade. His spade is a spade, he made the gray, displayed in a charade of pain. I am not a man, I am an animal of mail. I live by maritime, the law of water about to sail. With my mother happy, I slipped out of her canal. What you call a sailing ship is named after a female.